Matt Piak, and this is the new print and play Matt. And this segment, Tastes on Tuesday. Essentially, I just do a, a dive into a mechanic I really like or, or dislike. Uh, and today, um, I want to take some time and, and talk about auctions and why I really like auctions, what games do it well, as well as um, just why, why I'm drawn to it, why, why um, an auction mechanic usually... Uh, brings a smile to my face. So, um, without further ado, let's hop into it. To begin with, this is a classic game here, For Sale. Um, For Sale is one of those games that ever since I got into the hobby back in 2012, I've been hearing about. Um, And it wasn't until about a year and a half ago that I actually was able to play for the first time. Maybe it was two years ago. It wasn't that long ago, needless to say. So, for sale, I was like, it's, it's a simple auction game. It's a filler. How good can it be? Well, man, I was, I was in for a surprise. In this one, you are essentially, you're going for, at the beginning of the game, everybody's given a certain number of coins based on the number of players. And there's, there's cards that are all laid out here. So, um, and they're different properties. They all have different values um, indicated on them. And that's essentially how strong or how good that property is. And so what you're going to do is you're going to, um, one player's going to start a bid and they're going to put their coins out on the table. Meanwhile, all of their other coins will stay hidden. Um, As it goes around, people will push the bid up. And when the first player decides to pass, so let's say I'm the the player here with these three coins, if I decide to pass, if I don't want to go in and put in eight coins to beat out the player over here, then I take this number six over here. So I get the TP. Um, And then over here, if this person then passes, they'll pick up the 11. This person passes, they then pick up the 17. And then this person here at the end is left picking up the, the 28 for the amount they paid. What's really nice is all of the other individuals um, that picked up early that passed they all have to put half of their coins rounded up into into the middle. That's what they spent on their property. Um, and so sometimes you're just pushing the bid to drain everybody of coins, um, knowing that at the end of the day, you're only going to put half in there. Um, unless unless you read it wrong and you know get stuck with a really high bid on a card you don't necessarily want. Um, and that's the, the first phase of the game. And, and that, that is an interesting part, but... Um, that's not what makes this game so great. What makes it so great is that immediately following all of that, after you acquire essentially a portfolio of uh, properties and houses, you go into another auction phase, but this is you selling the properties. So cards are going to flip out um, that are various monetary values, and every player is going to pick one card from their portfolio, place it face down on the table, flip it up, and whoever has the highest number there is going to be able to um, grab money based on kind of the ranking order of all the properties. So let's just say these were the four cards that were played. Whoever played the 28 would get to take the highest value money card. Whoever played the 17 would get the second highest value, so on and so forth. And so the goal of the game is not only to acquire the properties of the highest price, but to then be able to sell those properties and make the most profit. Sometimes you don't end up picking up the best cards throughout the the first phase, but you're able to turn them around in the second phase based on how the cards come out. I know for me, I personally love when I get the the cardboard box, which is the one in the deck, and all the cards get flipped out for the money, and it it ranges between um, $0 and $15,000, and so, Um, I always love that opportunity when it's like seven grand or above for all the cards. I just throw my one out there. I know I'm not going to get, um, not going to get one of the highest cards out there, but heck, if I get seven grand off of my, my property, that's a value of one, that's a huge return on investment. And so kind of seeing how that all plays out is, is really exciting. Um, auctions in general bring about a certain level of player interaction, Um, that isn't always seen in today's games. A lot of times 
especially in Euro games, you're almost playing your own game um, at the table with a bunch of other people playing the same game, but interaction's really minimal. In auction games, like for sale, you're constantly looking at how much money everybody has or trying to figure it out when it's hidden, and you're trying to figure out how you can how you can enter in to the interaction um, to get the greatest benefit. Um, another great auction game I, I really do love is High Society, um, designed by Reiner Knizia, put out by the latest edition was Osprey Games, but this has had plenty of different uh, publications. Um, and in High Society, there are different cards coming out that are going to, um, as we see here, lend to prestige. So this one, this casino is worth four prestige. This uh, perfume is worth one prestige. This champagne is worth two. Um, there's cards that multiply that, like this is a times two. And so what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be using the cards in your hand, which everybody has the same cards um, to begin the game with, to bid um, for these different cards. Um, and as you're laying these out, you don't get any change in the game because your money is in different denominations on different cards. So whatever you put down is what you're bidding and you can continue to up the bid. Um, and then after everybody passed, whoever bid the most gets to take the card out of the middle. Um, anyone that didn't get the card out of the middle gets to keep their money. Um, so it doesn't all go, go away or there's no mechanic like in for sale where you end up losing half for bidding. Um, and so it's a very simple, um, very simple mechanic, a very simple auction game, but there's a twist. There's always a twist. And so in this one, the twist that I really enjoy is that um, at the end of the game, whichever player spent the most money is immediately out. They lose because they're no longer part of high society. They don't have enough money to be part of high society anymore. And so although they may have the most prestige, because they don't have the financial backing anymore, um, they're not seen at, at the same class level. And so um, there's really this the constant metagaming of trying to figure out who's spending what, how much everyone spent, and how are you going to um, sneak in there, spend enough money to get the prestige you want and need, but also don't tip the scales and go too far. Um, and so I, I find find that little twist on it to be fascinating because in most auction games, um, you're just going to want to, you know, obviously you want to budget, but you're going to want to spend as heavily as you can on all of the, the larger cards. And um, in this game, there's definitely a deterrent to spending too much money. Um, another game that I love that has, um, that has great auction uh, mechanic well, I should preface this. The way the auction mechanic fits into the rest of the game, I really enjoy it. The actual auction and the, the way the mechanic works is pretty, I, I would say, generic. And um, that's R Raccoon Tycoon. In Raccoon Tycoon, players are vying for control of different railroads. It's, it's essentially set collection. There's um, certain railroads like the Top Dog Railroad and the, uh, the, the Tycoon Railroad and uh, the Big Bear Railroad. And you're trying to get these sets together to get more points out of them. But throughout the game, you're also building buildings. You're connecting towns to these railroads, and it's not like a it's not like a map like you'd see in like a Ticket to Ride or something. Um, it's just collecting the the cards essentially off the board. Um, but the main way of getting your money is navigating the stock market, um, driving the price of certain goods up, and producing other goods, and then selling a high quantity of different commodities when the price of that commodity is high. Um, I know it sounds generic, but let me tell you, it's it the way all the pieces fit together. Uh, it's it's great. Um, the auction is pretty simple. You just go around the table and you can't bid money you don't have. And so um, you're trying to everybody's got their money hidden. So you are trying to read the other players, figure out how much money they have, see when you can push the bid up and when you can back out. And that whole interaction, that whole 
um, trying to jump into the mind of the other players sitting at the table is just, it's a really fun experience. Now, like I said, there's nothing mind blowing about what Raccoon Tycoon does with the auction. The, the actual mechanic um, isn't, isn't anything super special or unique, but the way it fits in so um, elegantly with these, with the other push and pull elements of the game, with the um, movements of the pricing of the commodities to have money swing really large in your favor right before you know somebody else is going to go into an auction, you might end up scaring them out of going into an auction because they know you can outbid them because you just picked up $35 or $40. And so um, that that pressure that builds up, that tension, I love that. And that's that's not found in a lot of games without the, the auction mechanic where you're trying to get into into other players' heads and figure out exactly what they have so that you can plan accordingly. Um, it scratches kind of the same itch as simultaneous action play, where you select something, which it's kind of funny because this is in for sale, but when you select a card, lay it down and flip it over, hoping that whatever you did, you anticipated what your opponents were going to do, right? Um, and so I, I really like that, that tension element. From a mechanic side of things, probably the most interesting auction mechanic I've seen is, is from an older title called Infamy. Um, this one I got, I think in 2013 or 2014, off of a recommendation by the, the board game or the Game Boy Geek. Um, and I, I really enjoyed this one. It's um, not talked about a ton anymore. Uh, Travis Chance is the designer. Um, he does a lot of things for Colossal Games. Um, right now but uh, this was before that he was with mercury games it might have even been his own company i'm not i'm not entirely sure don't quote me on that but um in this game what was interesting is everybody had a set amount of briefcases um that they would use to essentially um attract different uh, members of intergalactic gangs um to come help you gain infamy or um, gain reputation within certain uh, mobs or gangs. Um, and what was interesting is your briefcases, they carried from the, uh, the, the day round and the night round. So you had to not only plan kind of how you were going to bid and do things throughout the day, but whatever you had left was also going to impact how you followed through with the night round as well. Um, in addition to that, the way the actual mechanic of bidding the briefcases worked was um, just very different. So what would happen is any time you placed a bid, you would always have to accompany it, or you always have to accompany it with, a, with an additional briefcase. So if I want the bid to be, let's say, three, I would have to put in three briefcases and a fourth briefcase to kind of pay to get into the bid. That means now if somebody wants to beat me out, they have to pay four briefcases and an additional one to get into the bid. Now, this is where it gets interesting. I've already bid my three, and let's say I want to hop back into that. I want to beat their four and go with the five. I am going to spend an additional briefcase and then add whatever is needed to beat their bid. So I had three, so then I could add two more briefcases, but that's a total of three briefcases. Um, and so from there, you end up spending a lot more the more often you bid. And at the end of the bidding, when everybody has passed except for one person, all of the briefcases that were spent to get into the bid are uh, spent. You don't, you don't get those back, even if you lost the, um, lost the bid for the, the gangster to come help you and join. And so Every time you go into this auction, you're you're thinking really, uh, you're thinking about all of these briefcases. What you're going to, if it's the day, you're like, what am I going to need for the night? Um, and as you've played this game more and more, you end up learning all the gangsters that come out, and so you can kind of see, oh, I know these two guys aren't there, and I really want them, so I definitely want to hold on to more briefcases now, and so I'm going to be a little bit cheaper in this round. 
it also deters some of the players from even going in on certain certain gangsters. There's no reason to. It's going to be a waste of your briefcases, depending on what what you're going for and what route you're going to play. And so, um, there's there's just like a certain bluffing element to that too, because I might not want to go in on this bid at all, but if I make everybody at the table believe that I want to go in on it, they don't want to have to keep going back and paying more briefcases to enter back into the bid so they'll start the bid really high and then i'll never enter in um there's just a lot of mind games to be had there and i just find that incredibly engaging it's um it's great to sit and stare at the other people at the table looking around and what are they going to do okay how many briefcases do they have they've spent how much and as that mental math starts going and you start um getting an idea of kind of what, what everybody's doing at the table um you then like there's just this moment where it all clicks and you're like yes i got it i know what everybody's doing when you're wrong it's hilarious and when you're right it just it feels so good and so uh, for me that's why i love auction mechanics how about you do you know any games that have had i don't know an auction mechanic that is kind of different or or out there um something that's not just go around the table and, and bid um, if so, what are they? Um, I'm always looking to add more to my collection, find, especially finding older games that I can trade for um, to check out. Um, so if, if you have any, if any come to mind, please put them in the comments below. Otherwise, this has been the uh, Neoprene Playmat, and uh, keep on gaming. <laughs>